Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Meseches Psachim Daf Kuf Chaf Aleph is the last and final Daf in Meseches Psachim. It is a very short Daf. We will begin a few lines before the Daf begins at the end of Daf Kuf Chaf, which discusses the halachos of a pigol and a nosar being metame the hands of the Kohen. Then we'll get to a brief Mishnah on Daf Kuf Chaf Aleph, which discusses the bracha of the Karban Pesach and the Karban Chagiga, and if you can be mighty one with the other, the Gemara. We'll explain the Machlokis, which is mentioned in the Mishnah, and bring another similar case about two brachos said by one person over one mitzvah. So first of all, we had seen in our most recent Mishnah that Pigol and Nosar are metame, the hands of the Kohen. This is Midar Banan. Uh, any meat which has a psul of Pigol, that is that the Kohen who is bringing it had the wrong intent in mind he had. He in he he had in mind that the carbon is brought for the wrong person or for the wrong type of carbon, like if it's a shlamim and he had in mind that it's a chatos, that is a psol, and that psol also affects the carbon to the extent that his hands become tummy. Similarly, any leftover meat from the carbon affects his hands and it become tummy once it gets the psol of noiser. So the Gemara says these two are meter of banan. The Gemara goes of Hunan and Rechiza that say different things, and the Gemara will end up saying that one is talking about pigol, one is talking about noiser. Now, as follows. First of all, what is the reason? For the Gzair de Rabbanon that they make the coin's hands tummy. So Gemara says, Rav Huna says uh, one thing and Rav Chisda says something else. We don't know which one is which. Rav Huna says, uh, one says it's because we are suspicious that the Kahanim will try to have the wrong intent in mind and therefore they will get back at somebody who was bringing a carbon that they don't like or they will make a carbon which was meant to be a shlamim, which they only get a small piece of, into a chatas, which they get a big piece of. In order to prevent that from happening, we make sure that the kahanim are uh, uh, motivated to avoid having the psal of pigle because it will be matami their hands. This is referring to pigle. And the other one is referring to uh, Neusser, and, it's, and he says that the reason that it's matami their hands is because we want kahanim to not be lazy. We want to make sure that they eat it up quickly and they don't, end up leaving it over past the time, and therefore we have the halacha that nosar is also metamid hands. Now, what is the size of the tumma? What is the size as metamid hands? So the Gemara again says it's a machokis, whether it's a kezayis or a uh, size of an egg. So the Gemara says this is a machokis. This is not two people saying different things. Um, the machokis is based on what halacha should we follow. When Chazal applied the halacha of Tumah, did they make it dependent on the iser of pigol and nicer, that which is forbidden to eat? The halacha is that it's forbidden to eat just a kezayis. Somebody eats a kezayis of pigol or nicer violates the iser. So did they apply the Tumah to the iser and therefore it's the same size? Or did they qualify the Tumah as all other halachas of Tumah? The halachas of Tumah are that foods that become Tameh needs a minimum size of an egg. That is the machokes. According to that opinion, it would have to be the size of an egg. If it's following the Isser, then it would be the size of a kezais. Okay, now we get to the last Mishnah and the Masechda. The Mishnah discusses the bracha on eating the carbon. There are two karbanas that are potentially eaten on Pesach itself. There's a carbon Pesach that has the bracha al achilas ha-Pesach, or lecho es ha-Pesach, depending on Rishonim. Uh, Rashi says it's Alachidas Psachim. And then the other carbon there is the carbon Chagiga, which is brought sometimes together with the carbon Pesach in order to make sure that you're not starving when you're eating the carbon, that you are somewhat full. So that's a carbon Chagiga. That is called a Zevach. And the Brach on that is Alachidas Zevach or Alachidas Zvachim. So the Mishnah says there are two brachas here Alachidas Psachim, Alachidas Zvachim. The question is, what if you made one on both carbonis? So one thing is clear. Everybody agrees. You cannot say al chilas zvachim and have it apply to the carbon Pesach. Pesach is not included in the bracha of zvachim. There is, however, a machok is whether the bracha on the carbon Pesach could also apply to the chagiga. According to Rabbi Shmuel, it could. According to Rabbi Kiva, it cannot. Now the Gemara explains that the machok is based on the throwing of the blood. The main mitzvah of the carbon is applying the blood to the mizbeach. And the Chagiga, which is a shl- which is a Shlamim, and a Karben Pesach have different halachas as to how they are applied. A Karben Shlamim, the blood is thrown from a distance on the wall of the Mizbech. A Karben Pesach, it is poured gently onto the Mizbech. One is a Zrika and one is a Shvicha. So Gemara says the Machlokas is based on... Does a Shvicha count as a Zrika? Does a Zrika count as a Shvicha? Does, is one included within the other? 
One thing is clear that a carbon pesach, which requires a shvicha, is not included in a zrika. You cannot do a zrika and say, "Oh, I did a shvicha." Uh, a shvicha is a type of zrika that can't be, and therefore the carbon pesach, his bracha can never be included in the bracha of alachilas hazerach. The carbon pesach shvicha is not included in the uh, zrika of the carbon. Chagiga, and therefore his bracha can't be included in the bracha of the carbon chagiga. Machlok is between Rabbi Yishmol and Rabbi Akiva. Is does a zrika count as a shvicha? When you throw the blood, does that count as a pouring? Does that also qualify as pouring? Um, Rabbi Yishmol says yes, a zrika counts as a pouring, and therefore uh, the term of pouring, which you were supposed to use, also for, refers to and applies to the zrika you're going to be doing on the carbon. Uh, Chagiga, and therefore it's correct to say one bracha, which applies to both of them. So if you just say the bracha, it includes both the carbon Pesach and the carbon Chagiga. Now, the Gemara discusses a totally independent halacha, but it's similar in that it's two brachas on one mitzvah. The Gemara says, Rabbi Simlai wanted to do a pidin aben. And they asked him, there are two brachas on pidin aben. There's a shaykh shalom and says, it's Ivano al pidin aben. And there's a Shechianu. Now we know that the bracha, Shechianu, 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 is said by the father of the child. The question is, who says the Shechianu? Who is the one who has the main joy here? Is it the father because he's performing the mitzvah, or is it the Kayan because he's getting the money? So Gemara says, Rabbi Simlai did not have the halach in his hands. He did not know. They can't, so they went and asked in the base medrash, and they said that the father of the child says both brachas. He has the main simcha, the simcha shal mitzvah, and that is actually the halacha. The Gemara concludes in Masechta, the father of the child says both brachas. Hadron Allah Masakh Sakhan Vahadrach Alon, Hadron Allah Masakh Sakhan Vahadrach Alon, Hadron Allah Masakh Sakhan Vahadrach Alon, Hadron Allah is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.